In this chapter, we're going to learn more about libraries and even how to create our own libraries. We've already used libraries before when we've done import random, random was the library, import pygame, pygame was the library. It is a lot like going to a library and checking out a book, but instead of checking out a novel to read, what we're doing is checking out a set of functions and a set of classes that we can then use in our own programs without having to write those classes and write those functions ourselves. It's really nice to go to the library and pick out a book on how to create random numbers and not write the algorithm or worry about that. We go to the library to get a book that allows us to do everything that Pygame does. We go to the library and get a book called Pygame that allows us to do all the Pygame functions and sprite classes and everything we've done so far. This is really nice because we don't have to recreate the wheel from scratch every single time. We can go grab code that's already been written. And in fact, if we write our own really useful functions that we want to use in multiple programs, we can create our own library. Libraries can also be broken down into different sub-libraries. We've seen this before, for example, with Pygame. Sometimes with Pygame, we do pygame.draw. And the draw function itself is like a sub-library in the main library that has all the particular draw functions that we're used to, rect, polygon, line, ellipse, that type of thing. This helps with the organization. Just like in the library, there's different sections for fiction, nonfiction. It just provides for another organizational tool when we're creating these libraries. There are a lot of reasons to use libraries. One of the reasons is that right now our files, which used to be short, are starting to get to be longer and longer with more and more code in each particular file. It would be really nice if we could break the program into smaller files that are in different logical chunks, like this might handle the spaceship, this might be the main program, this might handle planets, rather than having all of this in one big long file. This would allow, for instance, Bill to work on the spaceship program, Nancy to work on the main program, and Jill to work on the code that handles how a planet works. Therefore, it makes it a lot easier for three people to work on one program than if we all had one big long text file and all the program was in that file, it would be a lot more difficult to have three people work on it. Even if it was only one person, this makes it really easy because then if I want to work on the spaceship, all I need to do is open up the spaceship code and I don't have all the other code from the main program in the planet to try to sift through while I'm working with it. Now, in the examples we'll do in this video, the programs are going to be so short that you are absolutely right. There is no reason why we would create separate library files. But I want to show short, simple, easy to understand examples while we're creating those library files, even if there's no particular reason to do separate files because the programs are so short. All right, to begin with, let's create a simple file. And I've got test.py right here. And inside of this file, I'm going to create a function called foo. And the foo function just prints foo. Nothing too fancy, and I'm going to call the foo function. Nothing new in the code that I've done so far, and when I run it, it prints out foo just like I expect. Okay, this program is not so long that I would need to break it into separate files, but it provides a simple, easy program for me to break up and show you how to break it into different files. I want to take this foo function and move it to a different file. All I need to do is create a new file. Then I'm going to cut the foo function out of the old file, paste the foo function into the new file, make the print here a little bit bigger, and go ahead and save it. I'm going to call it myfunctions.py, save it. Now I can see my program. I've got foo and myfunctions.py. If I were to go ahead and run this program, the program doesn't work. Just because I moved that function to a new file, the program doesn't automatically go to the new file and pick it up. It has no idea what the foo function is, and all of a sudden it is getting really confused. 
How do I bring in another file? Well, remember, I need to use the import statement. And in this case, I'm going to import my functions because if you'll note over here, the file name is my functions. Therefore, what I import is going to be my functions. Note that the py that I've got going on right here, we don't do my functions.py, we just do the file name, skip the extension. Import and then the file name minus the .py will actually go and grab that file. The files need to be saved in the same directory. Just like loading graphics, just like loading sounds, you need to exercise the same care to make sure that all the files are in the same directory as before. Now that I've imported my functions, I should be able to run this and have it work, right? Well, unfortunately, it still doesn't know what the foo function is. If you remember from before, I created the foo function right here inside of my functions. But now it's still not finding the foo function even though I properly imported my functions. If you'll think back to importing random or importing pygame, anytime I did those imports and needed to call the functions, what needed to come before the function? Pygame dot or random dot rand range. Same rule applies here. I need to do my functions dot foo. When I do my functions.foo and run it, the program runs correctly and I finally managed to take this file right here and the functions out of it and put it into my main program. This cleans up my main program, puts the functions into a separate file, allows me to more easily manage a larger program and even have multiple people work on the same program at the same time, which is really nice.